Is there space there for the side sort of mounted boosters to be covered by the by a fairing? Because imagine like the whole thing is the same diameter. Maybe that's the case. Because look, like you've got the engines below. I've never seen a proton like that. Normally you can see each individual exposed. I mean, just Google what the <laughs> what the UR500 you know, proton looks like. But yeah, it looks like you can see each one. But they've almost got this shroud over the whole thing. Perhaps it was easier for them to model that. I've never seen anything like that. I've never seen a proton look like that. But I, yeah, it has got the right number of engines. Yeah, you can see the tanks. And like normally the proton is the same diameter, like centrally. And then you've got the side boosters on it. So yeah, it's got this shroud over it. But it looks interesting. Mean, I guess it's not wrong. It's just not what it, I'm used to it looking like. <laughs> that fairing looks absolutely absurd. I believe the reason Salyut was the shape it was was due to the maximum fairing size they could use on the Proton. So only the top part of the station was actually covered by a fairing. Ooh! Extended battery plus one power for the duration of the mission. That is very, very nice. And yeah, this is becoming quite a reliable launch vehicle now. Perfect. And continue. Check it out! It's Salyut! Awesome! Salyut 1, or Kribsky 1 as we named it. Right, whoa! We've got to get 50 navigation in 6 turns. That's doable, but damn. That's, uh, that's quite an ask. That works nicely. Our payload reliability uh, <laughs> is kind of trash though. So... Cost an additional comms. Yeah, we can accept that one. Hey, bit of extra navigation. That's perfect. Right, do that again. Do that again. Do that again. I think just they should just spam those. And <laughs> we should be fine. Oh, something's gone wrong. Uh, cost an additional comms again, but we can afford that. Uh, what's this one? Output would be reduced by one. We'll resist that one. Okie dokie. Just... Same thing again. We're at 38. Bit more navigation. And finally... Bish bash bosh. Don't even need to do that. We can just do that. But, yeah, we might as well have a bit of excess just in case. Uh, yeah, perfect. Two turns early. Wow, that was hard. Not. <laughs> yeah, perhaps this isn't, isn't supposed to be too difficult a mission. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, we're fine. Space station deployment complete. Now deploy the space station systems. I didn't check how many tasks there actually are on this mission. Really, there should be a Soyuz dock to this as well. I mean, imagine if they had actually launched crew in Salyut on the Proton launch vehicle, which is, I don't believe was ever human rated. Um, there's an interesting way to uh, launch people into space, but uh, yeah, no, they launched the station and they launched the Soyuz to rendezvous with it, but Mars Horizons missions don't quite work like that. Still, this one's a little bit more complicated since we actually need multiple resources rather than just loads and loads of navigation. So let's have a little think about this. Okay, so this one is a little bit more complex, uh, but we still have loads of turns, plenty of power. We're knocking our drift off a little bit, but that should be fine. Let's confirm those commands. Cost an additional. Yeah, we can accept that. We'll figure that out. But I should check which commands. Hey, what's this? Drift will be modified between minus one and one at the start of the next turn. Oh, that's new. So this is fluctuating a bit. That's not helpful <laughs> at all. Hope it doesn't drift too much further with this little modifier. 
Oh, the output will be increased by one unless you spend one to resist it. Why would I ever resist that? That's perfect. That helps us. Wonderful. <laughs> it's odd that a failure actually ends up helping you. <laughs> a task failed successfully, I guess. Six. We've got four turns. Yeah, no, we'll be fine. That'll work. Yeah, I'm running a little low on power, though. Ooh, but the uh, random modifier did help us out a little bit. Okay, so we don't want to get rid of any more navigation because it's actually quite difficult to get navigation. There's only two commands that give it to us. Um, so really, we want to be doing this. So it's going to need a fair bit of comms to do so. But I think it can work. We'll need an extra turn, extra few turns, but we've got more than enough remaining. Okay. Okay, and we didn't drift at all that time. That's okay. So, do that again. Do that. That's 15, 28. Still drifting a bit, though. So I'm thinking next turn, just... Maybe do that twice. That'd be the easiest thing to do, wouldn't it? All right, confirm commands. Okay. All we have to do is charge up. Do that. We have all the resources we need. Drift is zero. Confirm commands. As long as both of these don't go wrong. Cost an additional data. Uh, I think we can afford that, actually. Yeah, we can. That's fine. <laughs> Both of them did go wrong, but we could afford the other one. We reduced by one. Actually, that one's fine as well, but... Whatever. There we go! Look at that! Kribsky won in all of its glory. Of course, the first Salyut mission, they couldn't even get into this space station. And then I believe they all died on re-entry, which is obviously horrible. Well, they asphyxiated, uh, I believe, shortly after the orbital module detached from the Soyuz. I've forgotten which Soyuz that was, but it's the only three people to ever actually die in space. So, yeah, it looks like our station went a little bit better than that. So, you can be thankful for that. Alexei Leonov and Sancheva are back safe and sound. Right, so now we can actually just get planning our Neptune mission. I believe we have enough funding to do that. We've got a free mission slot. Let's go all the way out to Neptune. Neptune flyby. Here we go. Let's get planning this thing. Extra power. Costs a little bit more. We have to wait an extra month if we want to do that, but... I think it will help us out. Okay. Just wait a month. And get building. Cool. We're working on our mission control expansion at the moment, right? Yeah, so now we just uh, save up for that, I guess. Japan's launching a crude moon landing in 22 months. Have they already done that? No, they haven't done that yet. Fair enough. We can't really make fun. I mean, we hadn't done a Mars flyby <laughs> yet, but still, I think that's uh, is that our Jupiter mission. Or is that our Mars mission flying out there? Uh, I'm not actually sure. When is our Mars flyby getting there? Three months. I think that might be Mars. Or maybe this is Mars. Oh, this is Mars down here. There we go. So that one there would be Jupiter, I believe. Cool. Hey, allows construction of an additional mission control expansion. How expensive are those? That is the question of the day. 500k! Huh, we can actually afford that. Question is, where do we put it? Uh, you don't get any adjacency bonus for another mission control. Or any adjacency bonus for over here. We get plus 2% reward if it was next to the PR office, but we can't put it there. 
Uh, that lowers our launch reliability. There's really just nowhere particularly useful to put this. So I guess just plonk it here. Out of the way in the corner. Cool. Fine by me. Okay, now will be done in six months' time. Let's set a research. So that will allow us to do a few more missions. Um, I don't see as there's much point in getting a space plane runway until we actually have a space plane. But we don't have any need for that just yet. Though it would be cool to use it to launch parts of a modular space station. Regardless, though, Grand Tour is now available to us. Although we do have... <laughs> Uh, three deep space missions ongoing. I think maybe modular space station would be a better bet right now. So yeah, let's go for modular space station. Um, that is a twenty thousand kilogram mass. Yeah, we can lift that, lift that into orbit with uh, an N1 rocket. But we probably should get working towards the Buran at some point. Um, how much would that entire thing be? Do you need? Anything else or capacity? Thirty thousand kilograms. Launch reliability seventy percent. Build times one year. But hopefully, once it's already built, you can partially reuse it and save money. I mean, you know, the economics of that didn't actually work in reality, but maybe they work in the game. Six upgrade points as well. Oh, you know what? Yeah, we're going to research modular space station, get building the payload, and then we're going to research Buran and launch the modular space station on the Buran. I think that'd be really cool. Media focus on Salute experiments. Several news programs have featured stories about experiments performed on your space station Salute, including those devised by school students as part of an educational campaign instigated by your agency, 400 Science. Very, very nice. Yeah, so that was when we put um, a bunch of experiments and stuff on Salute. Aha! Our Mars flyby has arrived. And our Uranus <laughs> Budski one. My god, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> what am I like? Right. Um, that's a decent launch reliability. I really, really want to do science training. Because look at the science reward. I think, I think that launch reliability is high enough that we can risk it. Risk it for a chocolate biscuit. Uh, yep, yeah, we'll get a 20% science buff. Launch in May. Perfect. Confirm mission setup. And then our Mars flyby. Let's continue. And there it is. The red planet in all of its glory. Obtain scientific data. Well, we can do that. Confirm commands. Oh, and things are immediately going wrong. It's okay, we've got plenty of power. Oh wow, the payload reliability of this is not actually great. Oh, okay. Now this might be more complicated than I thought. Uh, hmm, we just blew like half of our power on our first turn. So we just need one more navigation, three more data next turn. As long as everything doesn't go wrong, <laughs> like it did on the previous turn, we should be okay. Voila! Five, eight, three. Bit of power left. Perfect. Uh, that will be reduced by one. We need to resist that. And that one's perfect. And we're done. Full turn early. Voila! He still got it. He still got it. Perfect. Apparently that was atmospheric entry. So, yeah. It was like the climate orbiter... Where a conversion between the Imperial metric systems didn't work and it smashed into the atmosphere. Um, yeah, I didn't realize our flyby was meant to enter the atmosphere, but alright, fair enough. A little bit of a science boost. Perfect. I would like to just have completed all of these. Um, so yeah, we're going to do this. Just a standard Venera 9. And there we go, we're going to go for... A Mars orbit. Because there is an achievement for having completed every single milestone mission. Um, there's also an achievement for reaching first in every single one. But I don't think that's possible playing as the Soviet Union. Because apparently they're the hardest nation to actually play as. Which wouldn't surprise me. Because most of their stuff is really unreliable. And 
just kind of bad, <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> Mars is dead. A popular magazine has declared that Mars is dead after a recent flyby mission dashed any far-fetched hopes that the planet had artificial canals. The PR office has suggested a counter campaign to drum up support your scientists have urged committing to a Mars orbit mission to prove how much there is to discover. Yeah, commit to Mars orbit. There we go. Since we are literally doing that next. Ah, Neptune flyby is finished. All agency affiliated contractors are available. Ooh, now that will be interesting. Whoa! See, this is telling me it might be worth actually doing some more research and unlocking some of these contractors. Rapid part construction. So, oh, okay, so you build it faster for 50% higher price. Uh, this costs less, but you get less support. This one, champions to launch day successes. So, okay, so yeah, you spend a little bit longer on it. Um, but increase the launch reliability. We've already got that similar thing from Cheng Sat. Although this one, the effect is more pronounced. Green Moon. Less stable payload ferrying. Okay, reduces the... Okay, I'm <laughs> just interested by all these different contractors. Great emphasis on innovation and scientific endeavor. Ooh, so it costs a little bit more. But you get more science. That's a cool one. Astronautica. They take a bit longer. Oh, and this is available due to diplomatic relationship with Japan. ESA. So we just like... Yeah, so these are everyone else's contractors, basically. Okay, so we've got plenty of pretty interesting new contractors available to us here which is pretty cool but we're going to go for this one where it costs a little bit more but we get a science boost um so it take longer to save up to be able to do that but yeah we're just gonna have to do launch reliability training um but as a result maybe i'll just reduce the build cost a little bit um so yeah we'll have to do launch reliability training um for me to be comfortable <laughs> but yeah we've got a 20 percent science boost from Ito Industries, so we're perfectly happy with that. Right, what do we name our Neptune mission? So Neptune's blue, and I was thinking, what's something that's blue? And then I was suddenly thinking, Eiffel 65, I'm blue, dabba dee dabba sky. <laughs> mission name sorted. I say one, it's probably going to be the only one that we launch. Um, what a stupid name. It's perfect. <laughs> so we need 1900 uh, K before we can launch that, but that is fine. We'll just wait a little while. These, uh, these flybys are going to take a long time to get to their location. So we're probably just going to be twiddling our thumbs for a little bit, at least until our mission control expansion is complete. Panera 9 is finished though, plus 25% science reward, but plus 25% to the vehicle build cost. That is fine by me. All right, this should be uh, a pretty cheap mission. Right, Rashki 3 is just going to use a simple R7 Soyuz block day configuration. Uh, it's the simplest one. Yeah, it needs a slightly larger launch vehicle since it's the Venera 9 probe, not the Cosmos probe. Here we go. Constructing a modular space station in low orbit will provide a vital testbed for microgravity-based research. Still though, our Uranus flyby is ready to launch. Does that say 109 months? It is occurring to me that we are launching a lot of these Outer Planets missions. I don't know if we could have done all of them in one with the Grand Tour, or if the Grand Tour is a different kind of mission. I really have no idea. Still, good conditions, 92% launch reliability. Go for it. Beautiful. And without a hitch. Not sure what the flames or anomalous plumes <laughs> coming out the side of the launch vehicle there were, but regardless, 
We are in orbit without a hitch, and the Proton is almost level 5, which is lovely. Continue. Ah, there it is, in all its glory. How, how long is this mission? Maybe I should check that. I know the Jupiter one was like 15 months, something like that. But Uranus is obviously a lot further out into the solar system. Maybe I should have checked this, because this... <laughs> I was thinking feeling like this mission isn't even going to get there until like right before we're ready to send crew to Mars. A massive thank you to my patrons and donators for their generous support, and an extra special thank you to Madzor, Peter Lushtenets, The Amazing Steak, Axel Jensen, Delta V, Dennis Klomp, Vermouth, Lady Lags a Lot, Simone67, Olaf Hammerhand, Scott Milligan, Nicholas Popkus, World, Wafer, Jagnath, Weir, Extra Crispy, Dreister, Lightning Gamer, Elmac, and Nobody Special.